Good morning and welcome once again to another moment in the Word. This is the final time in which Pilate will interview Jesus. We find it in John chapter 19 and we're beginning at verse 9 and we'll be reading and meditating to verse 11. If you have your Bibles, please open them up. We begin by looking and seeing in verse 9, and again went into the judgment hall and said to Jesus. Look at that first word, and. That means it's connecting. It's a conjunction. It's linking what is taking place in verse 9 with what went before. What happened just before? Why did they go back in the praetorium? Why did Pilate leave the crowd? It is said that the prior verse, the Jews reported to Pilate, we have a law, and by that law, one who blasphemes must be put to death. What did Jesus say? According to the Jewish leaders, Jesus claimed to be God. When Pilate heard that, he was more afraid. And so we find him now going back in the praetorium. Who is more afraid of what? What was it that Pilate was afraid about? Well, we would think at first he was more afraid because Jesus is now claiming to be God. Huh, but that doesn't seem to be true as we look at the rest of the text. Let's look and see what happens. He instead asked Jesus, so where are you from? That doesn't sound like the kind of question that would come from somebody that is afraid of who Jesus is. We know that in the first century, it was important to know where a person is from. So we find Paul of Tarsus. We find that Jesus is of Nazareth. In fact, that's what Pilate writes on the cross, on the inscription. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So he knows he is from Nazareth. In fact, that's why he refers him to Herod because he was a Galilean. So he knows where he's from. So is he really afraid of Jesus? I don't think so. But this is the sixth question that Pilate has asked Jesus. And we find by his other questions that he is really not afraid of Jesus at all. For instance, the first question that we find is in chapter 18, verse 33, and it is the question, are you king of the Jews? And then the second question is in chapter 18, verse 35. Am I a Jew? The first one was of sarcasm. The second one was of contempt. And then the third question, what have you done? Well, that's a question that is displaying his authority, and he kind of sees it as being rather, he sees it as pompous. And then he says, are you then a king? And now he's perplexed. And then finally, he says, what is truth? And now he is contemptuous pity. He doesn't even wait for an answer. And now we have this question. So where are you from? Well, Jesus does not answer. In fact, we find the word but is used, that ominous word. It's also a conjunction, but it's linking as a contrast. Pilate is asking small talk. He's talking about what is going on in sports, what's going on in the stock market, what's going on in politics, what's going on with the coronavirus. The facts are there is something much more important. And Jesus is not going to answer. But the other is he's going to expose the heart of Pilate by his silence. Sometimes you see silence is... Um, very, it speaks louder than words themselves. But it also is a picture of Isaiah chapter 53, that it, where we read that he was oppressed and he was afflicted, but he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, but as a lamb before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Jesus is silent. And now Pilate says to him, this is verse 10, Pilate says to him, are you not speaking to me? The word me is emphatic. In other words, are you not talking to me? Was he really afraid of Jesus? I don't think so. I think he's afraid of the Jews. I think he's afraid that the Jews now seem to have the upper hand and are demanding that Jesus be crucified. Pilate doesn't know what to do. But he takes Jesus 
And he says, are you not going to speak to me? Do you not know who I am? Now this is the seventh and final question that Pilate asks. And it's with sarcasm. It's with resentment. He has no time for this person that he has just had his henchmen beat up and spit on and, and make a mockery out of him with that crown of thorns and that regal robe that was actually a soldier's worn out robe. And so Pilate says, are you not realizing I've got the power to crucify you and I have the power to release you? Do you see what Pilate's doing here? Pilate has already said three times, I find no fault in him. Well, if he has no fault in him, then the power is according to Rome that he has to release him. But Pilate has now taken the law in his own hands, and he says, I have the power. It's me. I have the power. Well, if that be the case, he does not have the authority, and he does not have the power. But he thinks he does. Now Jesus speaks, and Jesus answers. You could have no power, and the word is authority, at all against me unless it has been given to you from above. From above is the same word that is used back in John 3.3 3 when he says to Nicodemus, except you be born again from above, you will not see the kingdom of God, that it has to be the spirit of God that is working within you that you're able to see the power, you're able to see new life. But it's also interesting what Jesus is doing here. The word for power or authority is in the feminine form. The word been given is in the neuter form. What Jesus is saying is you don't have any authority or power in yourself at all. In fact, you're thinking it comes from Rome. I'll tell you all authority comes from God. Your authority is because of your position, and God has given you that position. It's not because of who you are. In fact, we find in Romans chapter 13 that all authority and power comes from God. And whatever powers are ordained are ordained by God. And so whether we look at the various political figures or military figures or demagogues or dictators in the world, whatever they are, villains or great men and women, Whatever you think they are, they have been ordained by God. And whatever position you have, the authority comes from God. So then Jesus says, Therefore the one that delivered me to you has greater sin. The word for delivered is the same word that's used for betrayed. That yes, that Judas had betrayed Jesus to the Sanhedrin, but it was Caiaphas that delivered Jesus to Pilate, and Caiaphas will have a greater judgment, and that judgment is a judgment against him in eternity. Notice the final word that Jesus uses with Pilate. The last word he will ever hear is the word sin. That's the last word in verse 11. Is that the last word you will hear? The last word in the book of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, the Tanakh, is curse. The last word in the New Testament is the word blessing. Which word will you hear? What is the word you're hearing from God today? Have you closed your ears to him so he appears silent? Or have you opened your heart to him so that he's speaking to you from his word and you know his blessing? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that you have spoken and that your spirit leads us into all truth and that that truth reveals to us that Jesus is God. He is the one who died on the cross for our sin and raised again that we might have eternal life. We pray your comfort and blessing on those who know you and those who don't, that they might repent. In Jesus' holy name.